Hey folks, this is Kalani, with the recent alpha builds, all Covenant abilities are now available to play around with. Covenant abilities are going to be very important for your character's power progression in Shadowlands, they're one of the main features that change how your character plays, and right now you have to choose between the four different Covenants, making this a very important decision as you level up. So to help you figure out which Covenant you want to join, we're going to go through every class's Night Fae Covenant ability. Night Fae abilities draw upon nature themes and some rot themes, and they typically have very pretty animations. You should be able to hop to your desired class on the video's timeline, if the timestamps work properly, so you can skip around as much as you want. Before we jump in, be sure to pop by our live stream sometime. We go live every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. You can find links in the description and the comments below, and swinging by and saying hi is one of the best ways you can support the channel right now, and we always love to hear from you wonderful folks, so I hope to see you soon. Let's kick things off with the general covenant ability. Everyone will have access to this regardless of class and there's one for each covenant. The Night Fae ability is called Soul Shape. You turn into a little spirit fox with increased movement speed and you get a 10 yard blink on a 4 second cooldown. The effect lasts for 12 seconds or it lasts indefinitely if you're in a rested area. So for a little movement speed boost or just to look cute while you're in an inn or city hub, this is a cool covenant ability. The blink is nice for getting around a bit faster but in terms of actual utility and usefulness in a raid dungeon or pvp or any kind of actual content this covenant ability is quite lacking it's super pretty it just doesn't do too much Let's do classes in alphabetical order, starting with the Death Knight. Their Night Fae ability is called Death's Dew. This completely replaces Death and Decay, and remember all Death Knights get Death and Decay baseline in Shadowlands, so this works perfectly for every spec. You keep all existing Death and Decay effects, like Heart Strike and Scourge Strike hitting multiple enemies while you stood in it, but there's one major bonus on top of those. Enemies damaged by Death's Dew deal 1% reduced damage to you, up to a max of 15%, and their power power is transferred to you as an equal amount of strength, so you can get up to 15% strength every time you use Death and Decay, and it lasts for 15 seconds, and every tick refreshes the duration, which means if you have an enemy in Death and Decay for the full 10 seconds, your buff will actually last for 25 seconds, or thereabouts. You get 10 seconds free during Death and Decay, and then when it ends your buff continues for 15 seconds or so. Definitely a nice bonus. However, on a single target this only ever stacked to 11, so you will need at least two targets to get the full effectiveness out of this covenant ability as it stands right now. The good news is that the buff stacks faster for every target you add, meaning you'll get that 15% strength bonus almost immediately if you have enough targets. As with nearly all of the Night Fae abilities, this one is also incredibly pretty. Not necessarily in line with a typical Death Knight aesthetic, but visually appealing nonetheless. I think this ability could be a great choice for general purpose and AoE. 15% strength going into your AoE rotation could provide a massive DPS boost. It's also easy to use, you don't have to think too much about it, but because it just replaces Death and Decay, I also don't think this ability is altogether too exciting. Moving on to the Demon Hunters, this one is kind of insane. The Hunt. Charge to an enemy, inflicting nature damage and rooting them in place for 3 seconds. The target is marked for 1 minute, increasing your fury from Demon Spite against them by 50%. You may reactivate the Hunt every 30 seconds to teleport behind the marked target, ignoring line of sight. If that sounds crazy, that's because it kind of is. This will hands down be one of the strongest single target effects in the entire game, for two reasons. First, your fury generation is increased significantly against a single target, that's huge for DPS in general. Second, you can teleport back to your target once every 30 seconds, completely ignoring line of sight. So you can run around a pillar to avoid an effect, then jump straight back onto the boss. Less downtime means more DPS. But the real area of the game this effect will shine in is PvP. As if Demon Hunters didn't have enough sticking potential, now they can literally teleport to you as well. It does have a range, I think it was about 30 yards, which reduces the effectiveness somewhat, but it's still kind of crazy to have this ability. The drawback is obvious though, this has almost no impact in AoE, or in any monster or creature that dies quickly. 
This would be pure single target in whatever type of content you wanted to do, which is a very big decision to lock yourself into. This could be a great choice for hardcore PvPers, but there are other better rounded options available to demon hunters in my opinion. It also doesn't get much of an effect, only on the charge itself, so if you're looking for something cool and pretty, you can do better elsewhere as well. Up next are the Druids, Convoke the Spirits. Call upon the Night Fae for an eruption of energy, channeling a rapid flurry of 16 Druid spells and abilities over 4 seconds. You will cast Moonfire, Wrath, Regrowth, Rejuvenation, Thrash, Rake, Shred and Iron Fur on appropriate nearby targets favouring your current specialisation. You literally just spam a bunch of stuff for 4 seconds, it's pretty hilarious to watch. I don't really know how to look at this one objectively, it has the potential to be good, but it's just such a wild card that I don't think you could ever actually rely on it doing what you want it to do. You can cast Thrash and Rake as a healer, you can cast Iron Fur as a DPS. It's funny watching all the spells go flying by, but I'm not sure how useful it's actually going to be. Because you're just casting your spells for 4 seconds, you also don't get too much of a special effect, just those wispy things flying around you for the 4 seconds that it lasts. It's also on a 2 minute cooldown, so it's not like you can throw this off every 30 seconds or even every minute. While the idea is cool in theory, it seems quite weak in practice, maybe even one of the weakest covenant abilities we've seen so far, which I'm sure most of you druids don't want to hear because Ardenweald and the Night Fae were almost made for druids. Maybe if the abilities did more damage or were more effective, or maybe if they literally just cast within your specialization, that could be better. Hopefully something will change here before this goes live though. Then we come to the Hunters, who get Wild Spirits. 2 minute cooldown, summon a Wild Spirit at the target location that applies Wild Mark to all enemies below it for 15 seconds. While the Wild Spirit is active, each damaging ability you use against a target affected by the Wild Mark calls forth a Spirit Beast to strike your target for nature damage. Basically, it's a big AoE, and if you hit something in the AoE, you also zap it with Spirit Powers. It looks amazing, as most Night Fae abilities do, and it sounds really great at first. Plop down a big AoE, and any AoE you do does more AoE. That's kind of how it works, except the damage only triggers off targeted abilities. So work your way through Hunters and their AoE kit. Multi-shot will work, but Beast Cleave won't. Trick Shots doesn't seem to work either, and neither does Volley. Barrage doesn't even work to trigger the extra damage. So really, you're just left with Multi-shot. For survival, both Carve and wildfire bomb work, which means that's fantastic, but for the most part you're relying on multi-shots to trigger the effect for AoE of the other two specs. That doesn't mean it's useless, it's still going to be amazing on large packs of AoE where you can trigger it over and over again, but I figured it would be prudent to rein in your expectations maybe, and to give you more info about what can actually trigger it. Bear in mind that because this ability will also scale so well with AoE, it's probably going to be rather pants for single target. It still looks great though. Moving on we have the Mage. This is another beautiful looking effect. Shifting power. Draw power from the ground beneath you for 5.5 seconds, dealing nature damage to enemies within 15 yards every 1.4 seconds. While channeling, your Mage ability cooldowns are reduced by 3 seconds every tick. So this should take a total of 4 times, giving you 12 seconds off every major cooldown you have. That should include Fire Blast, Phoenix Flames, Combustion, Icy Veins, Arcane Power, Rune of Powers, hopefully everything. That's on a 45 second cooldown as well, so not only does this give you another option to deal some AoE damage, but you'll get every important spell back faster. This could be huge just for the cooldown reduction alone, but this will be one for the Sims for sure. It's also probably going to benefit cooldown reliance specs like Fire much better, though every spec should be able to make good use of it. Another issue you might run into is the 15 yard requirement. That means to deal full damage you'll need to be very close to melee. Blinking into a pack of monsters in a dungeon is pretty easy, but that also puts you in harm's way. If you like to keep your mage far at range, this might not be a good pickup for you, which is a shame because I think it's one of the best looking covenant abilities we've seen to date. Up next is the Monk's Feyline Stomp. Strike the ground fiercely to expose a Feyline for 30 seconds, dealing nature damage to anything that gets hit. Your Feyline will also do something else depending on your spec. Brewmasters will set everyone on fire with their Breath of Fire debuff, Mistweavers will heal any allies hit with an Essence Font Bolt, and Windwalkers will rip Chi and Energy Spheres out of enemies. 
So the ability is tailored to each spec and does something at least reasonably interesting. The DPS version might be the best one, chi orbs and energy orbs will mean more DPS no matter how you look at it, but the next part makes it even cooler. Any abilities you use while fighting on a Fey line have a chance to reset Fey line stomps cooldown, so you can keep stomping and stomping and stomping, dealing damage, healing, setting things on fire. It's pretty cool and it's an amazing effect in animation that scrolls its way across the floor. If you love the themes of Ardenweald, this kind of effect should be perfect for you. I like that the monks get a reset mechanic in here to encourage them to stick to their fey lines as much as possible, and if you get a lot of resets, you can create a sprawling network of lines to increase the area you can cover while still being able to trigger that reset. It's interesting, it's pretty, and it has the potential to be great for most specs, but mainly the windwalkers I guess. Then we come to the Paladins. This one is quite odd, so bear with me. Blessings of the Seasons will allow you to provide special buffs to your group. There are four total and you can only provide one buff at each time. Each buff lasts for one minute, but the cooldown on the ability to swap is only 15 seconds. You have to work your way through the Seasons in order as well, so when you use Blessing of Spring, you'll get the Blessing of Spring and the button will turn into the Blessing of Summer. When you use that, you get the Blessing of Summer and the button turns into autumn. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, spring. Rinse and repeat. That means even if there's a buff you don't like, you will still have to use it for at least 15 seconds before you can move on to the next one. If you only want one buff to be active, you would have to rotate three times to get it back, which will spend 45 seconds to then sit with the buff you want for one minute again. If you're lost already, I don't blame you, but here's what each blessing does. Blessing of Spring. Bless your nearby party members for one minute, increasing their healing done and healing received by 10%. Blessing of Summer. Bless your party members, causing their attacks to have a high chance to deal extra holy damage. Blessing of Autumn. Bless your party members, causing their cooldowns to recover 10% faster. And then the last one is Winter. Bless your party members. Their attacks will reduce enemies' movement speed by 20% and attack speed by 10% for 6 seconds. Each of them comes with a neat animation too, so if you really want a pretty effect, this isn't a bad choice either. You also get four animations for the price of one ability, which is great value when you think about it. As for how good this ability is, some of these have the potential to be great passive effects. An extra 10% healing done and healing received is huge for tanks and healers. Dealing extra damage is always going to be nice, and 10% extra recovery on cooldowns has some potential too. The slowing one is alright for PvP I guess, but the others actually have a shot at being decent. You can also pick and choose which buff to use in the moment. Do you rotate straight to extra damage, or do you let that healing percent one keep going for the full minute duration? The main problem I see with the ability is that you're using it as a tank, a healer, and a DPS. If you just want to buff yourself and take the best option for you in your role, you will have to wait 45 seconds every minute until you can get back around to the buff you want. This does mean your party will get some buffs in the meantime, which isn't a bad thing, but this is definitely not a let me do more damage kind of ability. This is a support role effect, which some paladins might not be all too happy with. You also need to manage this buff effectively for it to actually do something, which again, might not be your cup of tea. If you love to support your party or raid, and you're happy doing so with a rotation of four buffs, this could be the perfect ability for you. If you want to pew pew more damage big Templars verdict crits, probably pick something else. Up next are the priests. This is another weird one, Fey Blessings. Surround yourself with helpful sprites, causing your next 10 spell casts to aid your target, depending on your chosen spell. The spell and effects change based on spec 2, so here's Disc Priest. Shadow Mend or Mind Blast reduce an ally's damage taken by 10% for 15 seconds. Power Word Shield invigorates your target with 2% mana or 20% resource. Power Word Radiance reduces the cooldowns of one major ability for all targets by 3 seconds. Holy's Flash Heal or Heal reduce damage taken by 10% for 15 seconds. Power Word Shield, the same as Disc, and Prayer of Healing, the same as Radiance for Disc. And for Shadow, Shadow Mend or Mind Blast, the same damage reduction, Power Word Shield, 2% mana or 20% resource, and then Void Bolt reduces the cooldown to up to 5 allies' major abilities by 3 seconds. 
For the healers, this provides you with some significant support bonuses. Damage reduction on single target heals is huge. Being able to supply resources or mana is also very impactful, and reducing the cooldowns of players' abilities is useful as well. This definitely is not a throughput ability, but it offers some interesting supporting options. This is super weird for a Shadow Priest though, there is zero personal increase for a Shadow Priest which is really weird for a large cooldown on a DPS character. Even the Paladin Blessings had one blessing that provides DPS throughput. On the flip side, reducing your ally's cooldowns by 3 seconds for every Void Bolt is actually massive. Think about how many times you can Void Bolt in a single Void Form. 3 seconds are 5 different allies cooldowns for each Void Bolt, that's probably one of the best support abilities in the entire game right now. It's just a shame that no one will pick it or potentially care because it's going to feel bad pushing a button only for it to help other players. At least it looks pretty though, they upgraded the visuals on this one recently I think. Night Face still remains some of the best looking abilities out of all the Covenants in my opinion. Moving on, we have the Rogues. Sepsis infects the target's blood, dealing nature damage over 10 seconds. If the target survives the full duration, they suffer additional damage and you vanish from sight. Cooldown is reduced by 60 seconds if Sepsis does not last the full duration. That's on a 1.5 minute cooldown. Standard damage over time effect with a chance to allow you to get a free vanish in. This has some amazing interactions with all stealth bonuses, which also means the more you gain from stealth as a rogue spec, the better this ability is going to be. Not too bad for outlaw, a free vanish is always nice, but assassination and subtlety will benefit more, especially due to talents like Night Stalker or Subterfuge. This will also be huge in PvP, because what are the chances that someone will die from a little dot? I mean, if they do, fantastic, you just killed your enemy, but if they don't, they take another burst of damage and you get a free cheap shot in to re-engage. I think this ability has potential, and it has some interesting interactions with the rest of your toolkit. I don't know if it can match up to some of the others in terms of raw throughput and power, but at least it's not a completely dead choice if you want to be an Arden wield loving rogue. It's just a shame that it doesn't really have an animation, just a small swirly dew over the target's head. Then we come to the Shamans. Fey Transfusion. Transfer the life force up to 8 enemies in the targeted area, dealing nature damage every 0.5 seconds for 2.8 seconds. Pressing Fey Transfusion again within 20 seconds will release 25% of all damage from Fey Transfusion, healing up to 8 allies near yourself. This one looks pretty cool, I have to admit. You steal the essence from enemies in your targeted area and then you can disperse that essence as healing to allies. It's like a mass drain life which is kind of weird for a shaman, but there we go. It is nice to have another AoE option, and you can dish out some damage and healing within the same spell, but for a 2 minute cooldown I don't think it really does enough to get super excited about numbers wise. You also won't benefit from this ability unless you have lots of targets in front of you. Both the damage component and the healing component scale with the number of enemies you can actually hit, which means if you have just one boss to work with, not only will the damage not be super worth it, but because you only get 20 25% of the damage back is healing, it also severely impacts the healing potential. This is also a channel on a targeted area. If the enemies move out of that area for whatever reason, your spell will lose effectiveness, and because it's a channel you can't do anything else while you're draining the life from these enemies. It's a cool idea, it's got a wonderful animation, I just don't think it's going to be able to shape up against any other covenant ability on its own. Of course, numbers could change, but the channel, targeted area, and single target potential are all valid concerns. Then we come to the Warlocks. This is a bit of a weird one as well. Soul Rot. Wither away all life force of your current target up to three additional targets nearby, causing them to suffer damage over eight seconds. While the effect lasts, casting Drain Life will also drain life from any enemy affected by your Soul Rot, and Drain Life won't cost any mana. Soul Rot costs 20% of your max health to cast. You can probably see why I said this was a bit weird. On the face, it's a cleave damage over time effect with a bonus for making a drain life cleave as well, but drain life isn't going to be significant for most specs, so that part might just be useful for self-sustain while you're soloing, if you ever need it. There is one potential exception here. Affliction locks now get a talent that increases the damage of drain life every time you deal damage with agony, up to a 250% damage increase. 
Combining that with the Covenant ability could have created an interesting interaction, but the damage of Drain Life is so low at the moment that even with a 250% increase, it still isn't really worth casting over your other abilities. So potentially somewhat useful, but honestly the lack of interaction with any meaningful Warlock ability might just severely hamper the potential usefulness of this Covenant ability in general. It could have been a Cleave Shadowbolt or a Cleave Incinerate at the very least, so for the most part I think it's an interesting idea, it just doesn't really deliver right now. Numbers tuning could change this drastically of course, and if the ability affected a different spell that would be even better. The initial animation is also kind of cool, but you don't get much in the way of a damage over time special effect. And last but not least, we come to the Warriors. Ancient Aftershock is kind of like a mini shockwave. Slam the ground with your weapon, releasing a shockwave that deals damage and stuns up to 5 enemies per 1.5 seconds. Enemies struck take more damage over time and transfer it to you as 6 Rage. A few components then, initial damage which is always nice, a very brief 1.5 second stun which can be very useful as an AoE interrupt, but the 1.5 second duration won't make it quite as impactful as a shockwave or a shadow fury, but that's okay because there's also a damage over time component and it helps you to generate rage. 6 rage every 2 seconds for 12 seconds is decent, and it's on a 1.5 minute cooldown so you can use this semi often. It's got a very cool animation to go with it as well, even though it doesn't last too long because it's just one big poof of Night Fae magic. While this might be kind of simple in that it doesn't interact with a bunch of other abilities, it's still quite powerful on its own. An AoE nuke, an AoE stun, an AoE dot, and it's a rage generator all rolled into one. It might not be particularly exciting, but I think it's got at least some good potential. And that's all the classes covered for the Night Fae Covenant abilities. The Necro Lords are also all available, so we'll look at those ones next. And oh boy, if you like the Night Fae stuff, you're sure to love the Necro Lords as well. Most of the Necro Lord abilities are more interesting, in my opinion, and if you love dark green magic, you'll find them just as cool as the Night Fae. I think Night Fae abilities might still be the prettiest, but that's not what everyone is after when it comes down to the wire. We also need power unlimited power, so be sure to check out the other Covenant abilities before you lock in your selection. Do you know what Covenant you're going to pick for your characters yet? Are you basing your decisions off of the looks and aesthetics, or simply which ability is going to be the best? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to explore the alpha with us live, you can find us over at twitch.tv slash kalanitv. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday at 12pm Pacific time, and watching the stream and coming to say hi is one of the best ways you can support the channel right now. And if you ever wanted to be included in the list of names at the end of every video, a subscription on Twitch is the easiest way to make that happen. You get a free sub to any Twitch channel if you have an Amazon Prime too, so be sure to take advantage of that. A big thank you to everyone who has subscribed on Twitch already, and to our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join this lovely guy, Guys and gals, well now you know how. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.